So here we are, after episode 3 of season 8 of Game of Thrones. What a cracker it was, huh? I know you liked it. I think you can tell by the look on my face how I feel after that viewing. I haven't um, felt this way <laughs> in a long time since I've watched a, another divisive film. And I think if you check the writing credits of this episode right here, look very closely, I think you'll find the name Ryan Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> All the hallmarkings of a Ryan Johnson classic. Subversion <laughs> of expectations, ridiculous scenes that didn't make any sense, ruining a, a classic saga, you could say. <laughs> How do you feel after it, Daniel? You feel good? Feel uh, good about yourself and who you are? Well, I, I, I certainly think they went a, It's quite remarkable how quickly they can change your perception of a series in two minutes' time. Less than that, 10 seconds. Sometimes ten that's seconds. all it takes to change everything. I mean, I think they certainly, the writers certainly tried to shock us, and they, I mean, they certainly excelled oh. in that front. <laughs> if you want to talk about subverting expectations, I feel like the biggest expectation I had for this episode was it was going to be good. And that was completely subverted. It was, in my opinion, the worst episode of Game of Thrones, and possibly one of the worst episodes of television I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. I'm, just, I'm still remember holding out hope that there's. Some way, I'll Night King isn't really dead. <laughs> Absolute casual. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking what if about. The Night King isn't really dead. And what if Bran? What if his consciousness was put inside Bran? You sound like all... a madman. You're <laughs> clutching at straws. Sound... That's all you're doing. Do I sound madder than the Mad King? Yes. <laughs> you should be put down the same. Yeah, well, why don't you do it then with with the Lightbringer sword? Because Lightbringer doesn't exist, as you saw in the episode. <laughs> you know, what? this is my biggest problem with this. Is like, there's a lot of people online who have said they have no problem with I killing the Night King. Yeah, right? I do. I have a huge problem with that. Just, I don't, it's, it's, she's it's, not invested at all in killing White Walkers. This is the first episode where she's actually seen the threat to the North, right? Her entire character arc throughout all the seasons, all the books, is about vengeance, right? It's about avenging her fallen family and becoming this assassin. First of all, the faceless men can't twirl blades and take out. 20 men at a time. Come on, she was they jumping and scooting across rooftops too. No, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But it's just <laughs> like she's just she's invincible. That's what she is. Yeah, well, rightly so, shouldn't she be? No, she shouldn't be. This was not Arya's. Kill. I think it was not her story. The problem is every single season has been building up to the White Walker threat. And I think we all assumed that this was going to be the final confrontation. Game of Thrones is so much more than just the petty squabbles for the throne. And it looks like the last three episodes of the series are gonna be gonna be just that. Jon Snow going, I've I've beaten the White Walkers, now it's time to get you on the throne. <laughs> Your impression. <laughs> I feel like the That's what it's gonna be, isn't it? What was the point of Hard Home? What was the point of the standoff? What with was the, the Night point King of all Johnson? those episodes where the White Walkers were constantly like built up? Like when you see the Night King turn those babies into White Walkers. What was the point of that? That's another thing, when he caught Arya in his hand, I really thought no. she was going to turn to ice. It did not happen, apparently <laughs> she's invincible from that as well. Because we saw him just lay a finger on Craster's children and they immediately started yes. turning to ice. Not Arya, the plot arm is too strong, am I right boys? Yeah, speaking of plot armor, I found it absurd how Jamie and Podrick and they were all like pinned against the- and, and Brienne, they were all pinned against the wall, like by the zombies, by the White Walkers for the whole episode, and none of them Perished. They survived against the greatest threat known to man. It wasn't the greatest threat, Daniel. It wasn't the long night. It was so a one night stand. So you, you, you so I've seen more impressive one night stands in my life. So it turns well. out that that John John Snow is just an idiot. Just a man. No, He's just a cock. No one. No one should absolute been, wanker. No one should have been paying him any regard when he was warning people. Why about the threat. hell did Melisandre bring him back? I thought the entire point was he's the chosen one. He's the one that's going to bring. This is like the prince that was promised prophecy, right? It's mm. just like. He, he, he is the prince that was promised, he is the one that will bring the dawn, his is the song of ice and fire. Right? That's what Rhaegar said about mm. his child. Did you see any of that? Catch any of that? Do you like Apparently it? not. Remember that really cool fight where where John and the Night King clash blades? It was like a 15 minute battle scene and like both were trying to like cleverly outwit the other and... So yeah, that, that great battle with Night King and Jon Snow clash blades, wasn't that just life changing? How did you expect the Night King to go down? I don't I expected him to certainly go. More, I'll tell you I expected him to go down for fights. I expected his generals to be better at protecting him. Consider how intimidating they were made to appear. That was another travesty of the episode. Like the White Walkers came, right? The White Walkers are the ones that um, they control large, kind of hordes of whites. You could say, as proven in the last season, we didn't see a single White Walker in combat. <laughs> we didn't see the Night King in combat. We saw. Red shirts, essentially, for mm. most of the episode, just getting slaughtered by the hundreds <laughs> for no apparent purpose, no reason, none of it may means anything. 
I really thought what was going to happen is we we're going to have our key characters like Brienne, Jamie, Grey Worm up against White Walkers, mm. right? And we'd see some of them fall, we'd see some of them survive. Like to be stationed, and you'd see them killing White Walkers, huge swaths of whites going down at the same Corpses time. Corpses everywhere. <clears throat> That's another thing, there weren't many corpses in this episode, most people survived. I'm not sure why, because in the, the second episode of this season we saw the character arcs finish of Brienne of Tarth, where she became a knight. We saw Grey Worm's arc finish, where, you know, he's a, this kind of soldier that is unfeeling and he has this relationship, he has a future planned with, um, what's her name, Masande? Alessandra Nuff. Masande, I Masande, think. yeah. Yeah. Something like that. A few other ones, like, uh, well, Pod doesn't really serve any oh, purpose. Pod just, he, he pleasures the girls, remember? I don't know no, how they did how we did it, yeah. This episode certainly didn't pleasure me. <laughs> like, we saw all these arcs finish. There's so many for questions. For no reason. There's so many questions, like, what, what was the connection? I have a question, Daniel. What? Why was it so shit? No, I have a better question, but... <laughs> D&D. Why did you do this? How could you do this? I just, How like, could so, you ruin what's it? What's George R. R. Martin think? Probably not much because he certainly didn't tweet about this this epic episode. Oh yeah, it's the greatest episode, best thing since Helm's Deep, right? I think the problem is why a lot you and me have noticed a lot more negative reviews are, are coming out about this episode now that people have thought about it for a few days. But I feel like the reason a lot of people like it is because you could be distracted by like impressive visuals, like well choreographed, like a. Uh, Fight scenes, so great, great, great the acting. Films are so good. You can exactly. say exactly. <laughs> Michael Bay, Michael Bay, Michael Bay. Say. Effect, yes. But yeah, um, so I think a lot, a lot of people might not necessarily care about the story, especially like some of the more casual viewers who haven't been like invested and haven't thought deeply about the law. That's and, like, what pisses read the me books. off, Daniel. It's just it why just are you throws, watching this show? It throws the law out the window. Why are you watching the show if you're a casual? The first four seasons are so true to the source material. Yeah. Why did you like those first four seasons? Why? It, like, there was a lot of political intrigue. There was the greater threat to the North that has been, like, you know, heavily yeah. foreshadowed. The very first scene of the show was the White Walkers, right? How can you like it's okay. season five, six, it's seven, okay. eight? It's not you okay. Like it's not okay. You like the bad pussy. Oh, that was some of their writing too. Yeah, uh, we can. I think you can see the discrepancy <laughs> in the writing between season four and five. You saw where it all went downhill, and um, you've seen the combination of these these brainiacs in action. <laughs> <laughs> they can of their own volition. They have absolutely no clue what they're doing. They have no idea what a song of ice and fire is fundamentally I think, about. As do most of the viewers, I think, I'd say the like, casual viewers. What's, what's really sad about this is I know you've you've expressed this sentiment, but season one to four was probably some of the best television around. It was up there with Breaking Bad. Like, I absolutely loved it. Like, but it, it seemed like at the end of season four, a lot of arcs they just came to an end, and then season five when they deviated from the source material, um, D and D, they just. They were very good at adapting, but they weren't good at creating, creating. creating scripts, which is a problem. If, if you know you have that issue, pass it on to someone else who, who can help you. Or you can still work on the scripts, but like bring someone else in who has that creative spark. They're complete egomaniacs. I think this is complete they're like They're like polar bears. bears. Yeah, yeah. Remember how much effort they put into bringing that polar bear? This is, this is no seven. longer an adaption of a song of ice. <laughs> it's complete fan fiction and not very good fan fiction at that. I remember like the past few years where I've been heavily invested in the show and in the books and all, all the lore in general. And I've been reading all these fan theories. Like that, I think that's the best part of Game of Thrones mm. in a way. It's just yeah, debating with your mates about yeah, what happens yeah, what next. Happen, like right? I know you were in um, the Red Room, uh, a uni bar with some mates, and you were just debating about what Jon Snow's going to do next, how it's going to end. It doesn't seem like that's going to be occurring now. It didn't matter. I remember I was fighting so vehemently that the, the importance Snow's on. of Azor High and how they did status as characters mm. such an injustice as well. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Jon Snow is not as all high. It's Arya for some reason, even though it makes no sense whatsoever. I just don't understand if you're the showrunners and you, this has brought you widespread acclaim. Mm. This has brought you to the Star Wars saga, right? Where you're making the oh next God, Star few Wars. films. How can you adapt these books and just completely throw out everything that George R. Martin has worked for? It's called A Song of Ice and Fire in the title. It's about Jon Snow. It's his story. How can you not understand it? How can you fundamentally misinterpret well, Snow, the source material? He didn't really do much, did he, this episode? Apart from the scream, scream at a dragon, have a mental breakdown. What, his Fuzrodar Skyrim little sequence? <laughs> yeah. And then he, he beat the dragon by screaming at it. I, I can't believe that they've done... I can't believe you've done this, Dean. You've just... you fucked it up. You've fucked it up so dramatically that it cannot be repaired. You, you've <laughs> done the same thing Ryan Johnson did to The Last Jedi, where I don't care anymore. I don't care about the next three episodes. It's your doing, because why the hell should it's, I care? What, what's interesting Are you is, invincible? Whenever, you know, whenever writers have done this, whenever they've killed <coughs> off the big bad to try and shock you, it never works. Because we saw this um, in Star Wars, we saw this in Luke Cage with Cottonmouth. It just, it never works. So, people should be taking, like, hints from this. 
that's the thing is George R. R. Martin has always said that he, he hates villains that are villains for the sake of yeah. being evil. Which what did you what... see? What did you see in that episode? <laughs> did you see a mysterious threat with ulterior motives? I don't fucking think so. I saw a very well characterised being. <laughs> Oh, really? I, I, you took away from I thought, it? Uh, I've been lying the whole time. I think this was some absolutely incredible writing. I think it changed my life, and I think it set the benchmark for future television shows. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've just truly lost your mind. That's been a terrible episode. That was cool, man. <laughs> Couldn't even keep a straight face saying that. That's, that's the thing, is people... All these YouTubers... <clears throat> saying they're okay with Arya getting the kill. I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay because you don't understand. Not only have you destroyed every plot line north of the mm. wall, every single character that was attached to that, Samuel Tarly, Jon Snow, all of it, you've destroyed Arya's character as well. Like, it's meant to be this big empowering moment for this female. Th it's not. Well, you you've said, destroyed her character. You said the interesting thing how Maisie Williams came out and she actually said that she thinks that fan, there'll be kind of like a, a backlash to she what transpires right. in the episode. And it, it is right because if you really look at the story, Critically, you want a payoff in your story. You want all these like story threads to have a, a, a clear and like a good resolution. That ha isn't what has occurred here. It's just <laughs> there was no point to Jon Snow coming back. Like, hey, hey, I want to tell you some things. He didn't, why did he come? Why did he rise up again? <gasps> <laughs> For no reason. For to have a cheap thrill, like ah, oh, you're killing the Night King. To scream at that dragon. <clears throat> yeah, that's that was his purpose. Oh, God, that's exactly it. I just. I'm almost at a loss for words for what has happened to some of my favourite characters. I kind of felt like a student in the seventh, seventh grade like wrote this episode, didn't it? <laughs> oh, they probably would have done a better job. <laughs> oh, what a claim. I really think that, like, here are some of the things I would have, I would say to improve the episode that all I was thinking in the week leading up to. There was one key moment when I was watching this episode where my, my face just sank into my hands. And it was the moment in the crypts when all the dead started <laughs> rising up to attack Tyrion and Sansa, various, all these key characters, right? I really thought, for the week leading up, I thought, there's no way with the brains of Bran and Tyrion and whatnot that they would put all of their vulnerable characters in a crypt where the, we know the threat, the dead will rise. That's his main power, right? Mm. I thought what was going to happen is Bran the Builder built the crypts of Winterfell, right? With the old magic and his classic yeah, hammer. Of magic, and then Ned in the first book, he was saying how they had an iron sword in place of every statue to make sure the dead mm. never rise. The spirits were kept at Winterfell. I thought what was going to happen is the reason they placed on there is Bran knew that the old magic and the old gods were still prevalent in Winterfell and the dead were going to rise, right? And Tyrion and Sans were going to be really, like, kind of, you know, taken aback with this. I thought it was over. Then the dead start marching up the stairs and they go and face the Night King and the walkers <laughs> as the dead that fighting been, the that dead That would have been amazing. Living. I thought that's what was going to happen. The old Stark's coming back. And that's the thing is, Bran the Builder built these coffins. So you completely disregard my cool theory, right? These co these things, these these coffins, these these tombs that Bran the Builder made, made out of cardboard. <laughs> Skeletons could just tear out of them easily. Bran the Builder was an absolute cocksucker, apparently, <laughs> to D&D. Didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And that's Malisandra <laughs> as well. Malisandra showing up at the start of the episode. I thought How many of these characters do you think are cocksuckers because of the Nearly the all of them. <laughs> nearly all of them. Especially Jon Snow. The only characters that weren't ruined by I this. don't care about thrones and kings. I care about the greater threat beyond the wall. <laughs> I care about Cersei, Lannister. <laughs> there are worse things than the dead, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you absolute wankers. Now that we've beat the Night King, my love, it's time we get you on the throne. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I know I love you. <laughs> I think that's another thing. It's like when Melisandre left in one of the previous seasons, I think it was season seven, where Davos was basically saying, I'll kill you if you come back. And she said to Varys, you and me are doomed to die in this foreign land, right? I thought she was going to Volantis or a Shire. I can't remember exactly where the Fiery Hand are, but I thought she was bringing the Fiery Hand. For those who don't know, that's basically like R'hllor is the, the Red God, right? I thought she was going to bring a lot of the priestesses over with her to help combat the Long Night. I thought that was her entire purpose. Mm. No, she just kind of rocks up with her horse and lights up these Dothraki um, Araks, <laughs> I think they're called. And they didn't have even have dragon glass. They didn't even have... Um, yeah, and, and it, was just, it was just the cavalry charging towards hundreds, no, thousands and thousands of the undead. So that line probably would have been, I'd say, maybe like a hundred? It's like a hundred or more against Dothraki, thousands. Dothraki, probably like a, well, a couple hundred at least. It didn't, look like, it didn't look like many oh, that were charging forward. forward. I played a bit of Total War in my time, I know my battle tactics, but that's so the thing. So have I. <laughs> that's the thing, is like, why that? 
Why the hell didn't they have blaziers all leading up to Winterfell? Why wasn't the trench in front of the forces? What the hell was going on? The battle tactics, like, for anyone that understands the basic military strategies of kind of medieval warfare, you would probably be vomiting in a so bucket watching Rings this. has better strategy? Yes, it does. <laughs> At least they knew that they could hide behind a wall, you know, and they were shooting down at Helm's Deep. Mm. It was, remember, in uh, Return of the King, right? Yeah. You know when Faramir's father sends the cavalry charge to mm. fight a much greater orc force, it, it was seen as a sign of madness. Yeah. That's why everyone thought that he had lost his mind because of that decision. That's the first thing they do in this episode, and no one questions it. Oh, that's a shame. So, um, the next three episodes, do you think there's any way we can have payoff? Do you think there'll be anything that will, will get you excited? There's meant to be three holy shit moments that George R. R. Martin outlined after season four. Hodor, the Shireen thing. Yeah. There's meant to be one more, and I really don't think that's it, because another thing is, ah, oh, you never met Melisandre in the books, that's yeah. never gonna happen, this stupid blue-eyed prophecy, it's not yeah, gonna go Melisandre, down Melisandre, like she just keeps eyeing off, like, different people. Like, she was eyeing off, you know, Gendry. Arya. No, she was doing it to Arya as well, so she has no idea what she's doing. She just, like, gets a look at some random individual and goes, Oh, yeah? You're as well. Here we go. <laughs> the fabled legend. Him or herself. <laughs> there's, there's gonna be one more big twist, but the thing is, that's gonna even, change your life. I don't even care. How what can you make cry tears of joy? I think so I think I'll cry tears of horror. Right, say in the best timeline, right? That we're the not Night in King, the best timeline. We're but say we were right, right, and the Night King truly wasn't dead, and he came back. So say I don't like, want to talk about it. It's not. No, gonna say happen. a scenario where like he he didn't really perish, and say like the kind of you know where the babies were, where the White Walker babies were. Like say that when the Night Night King can't really die if Bran's alive or something. And he respawns at like that area in the north, and then they he respawns. What the no, fuck? He kind of, are you he kind about? of like he, he he restructures himself. He comes back. He's not. Really, he's kind of like he hasn't really You're died. Fine, but man. say he comes back, and like they're arguing for the throne, right? In episode four or five, and then maybe episode four ends with like the um the White Walkers returning while they've forgot their greater purpose, and they slaughter so many people. Just not gonna Am I thinking too deeply You're about this? You're thinking way too deeply. <laughs> I feel like the entire purpose of the Night King, he wasn't going to kill Bran. I think what would have, what would have been really cool is if he converted Bran. Oh, imagine that having awesome, the memories yeah. of the world. Imagine like, someone controlling has the three-eyed raven. Everything. Yeah. yeah, that would have been way cooler than him just showing up going. Oh, no, because no, oh, right oh, yeah, no, Bran can time travel as well. Yeah. So, imagine the power of that. Actually, that's that's a huge problem I have as well. Are we going to see Bran perform any more feats of time no. travel? But that's absurd. Why would, why would you? Why would, why would you introduce it? Because they didn't know what to do with it. They had the Hodor moment, that was it. Is that it? That's all they had, because George R. R. Martin had that moment. God he wrote that. These guys have no clue what they're doing, and I think that's very easy. Maybe it apparent. is good that George is taking his time with these books. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, all I know is it's not going to be the same in the books. There's no way in hell it can't be. Do you think this is going to be remembered as one of the worst moments in television? Yes, I think it's going to be the moment that ruined Game of Thrones. <laughs> I think... <laughs> Episode 3, Season 8, How to Ruin a Franchise, this is the prime example of it. I, I don't understand how you could destroy so many of the key characters like this. I don't understand why so many arcs yeah. were finished and you were too cowardly to kill them off as well. This is no longer the Game of Thrones it used to be. I think we've all been clinging on to hope that, you know, the first four seasons were so good that it's going to come door. back. Hope door! Hope <laughs> yeah, door! Just... Hope door! Hope door! Hope! Hope door! Hope door! Oh, Remember that scene? Yeah? Yes. Is, that good? is that a good arc? Uh... <coughs> Arguably offensive, but uh, <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure what they were thinking. Maybe they just wanted to get the show over hey, with. Hey, no, you'll be alright. Right. I won't be okay. <laughs> I won't! You're, you're, you fuck you, you did! did. Yeah! <laughs> I think, um, I think what's gonna happen is, there's gonna be somewhat of a conclusion, and Daenerys is gonna probably sit on the Iron Throne, Jon's gonna have his little tinier throne next to her, and bow down to her or whatnot. <laughs> I think, um... That's pathetic. The only prophecy left as we're standing is the one that Jamie's gonna kill Cersei, right? It's the, the Valonqar, or whatever it's called. Yeah. The, the younger brother's gonna kill her. If Arya is wearing a mask of Jamie's face and kills <laughs> her, I will not be surprised. There are some people saying that's the moment it'll break it from. That's not the moment for me. The moment's already happened. <laughs> it's already over. Night King, yeah. I... If you ever... If you are watching this episode 15, 20 years from now, and you have this million, billion dollar franchise, right? And you just think, man, I wonder how I can fuck this up in 10 <laughs> seconds. Look at this, and I'm sure you'll find your way. Well, anyway, let's get ready for uh, episode four. We've had a good chat about three, a great episode, and uh, we'll see you next time. We'll have more thoughts next time. <laughs> hey!